Hello, young chemists. Today we're going to talk about Charles' law, which is a gas law, and it focuses on the relationship between the temperature of a gas and the volume of a gas. So, Charles' law states that as the temperature of the gas increases, the volume of the gas uh, also increases. Saying that another way, the uh, temperature and volume of the gas are uh, directly related. When we do calculations, uh, gas calculations, we're going to use the temperature scale of Kelvin. Uh, it's also called the absolute scale because it has no negative values, uh, so only positive numbers. And this is important because if we used something like you know negative 15 Celsius or negative 15 Fahrenheit, our calculations might actually give us a negative volume, which doesn't make sense, right? Something either takes up space or it doesn't take up any space, so you can't have a negative volume. So Charles' law, uh, written mathematically, is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, where the ones are your starting condition, so starting volume and ending, uh, starting volume and starting temperature equals ending volume over ending temperature, and our temperatures are going to be in Kelvin. Each one of the Charles Law problems, you will be given three of the four variables, and you have to solve for the unknown. The first example problem we have here says, if an empty two liter bottle is sealed while inside a house, which has been heated to 25 degrees Celsius, and then placed outside, on a winter night that reached minus 18 degrees Celsius, it's very cold, obviously, what would the new volume of the gas in the bottle be? Okay, so you have a starting volume given, and we have two temperatures given. So the temperature is what's changing, and as a result of that, the volume of the gas will change as well. So what I like to do each time is I like to identify what I do and don't know. Okay, what's the stuff that I know? And uh, in this problem, we know the starting volume. The starting volume is two liters, so two liters. It's sealed while inside a house that has a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So the starting temperature is 25.0 degrees Celsius. The ending volume is what we don't know. That's our question mark, some number of liters. And our ending temperature is minus 18 degrees Celsius. So first, we identify what we do and don't know. Now, as I mentioned, we need to convert our temperatures into Kelvin. This negative number, if we plug this in and we actually solve, we will probably end up getting a negative volume, which is nonsensical. So we're going to convert our temperatures into Kelvin. The temperature in Kelvin is equal to the temperature in Celsius plus 273. It's actually 273.15, but for the sake of our class, we're just going to leave it at 273. So the temperature 1 is 25.0 plus 273 which gives us uh, 295, oops, sorry, 298 uh, Kelvin, 298 Kelvin. And temperature number two, minus 18.0 plus 273 equals Two hundred and fifty five Kelvin. So now that we've converted our temperatures into Kelvin, we're ready to plug them into the Charles Law equation. So starting volume is two liters over our starting temperature, which is two hundred and ninety eight Kelvin, and that's equal to our 
ending volume, right, some number of liters, you could set that up as X if you wanted to, over 255 Kelvin. Okay, now we have to solve for the unknown. We have to solve for this here, right? And uh, this is a situation where you can just cross multiply and then divide by the other one you have. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be taking these two numbers and multiplying them. And then whatever I get, I will then divide by this number, okay? So uh, on the calculator, what it will look like here is 2 times 255, some number, divided by 298, units of Kelvin will cancel, and we'll be left with our answer, which is uh, going to be in liters. Okay, and we'll, uh, we'll go to uh, just two significant figures here, which would be uh, 1.7 liters. It's always good to pause and ask yourself if that answer makes any sense. Um, you know, as the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. As the temperature goes down, the volume goes down. In this case, the temperature went down um, by, you know, about, uh, about 40 Kelvin, 43 Kelvin. Um, and so the volume we'd expect to go down, and it did. It went from 2 liters down to 1.7 liters. Now I'm going to solve a couple more problems, and we'll do them in the same way. Uh, and we will be solving for different variables. In that case, we solve for the ending volume. So this next problem, we are given the, uh, we have two temperatures, and the new volume is actually given. It's actually what the initial volume will be. So V1 is unknown. That's our initial volume. T1 was 150 uh, degrees Celsius. V2 is 75 milliliters. And T2 is 50 degrees Celsius. So we need to convert these into Kelvin, okay? So to do that, we're going to take 150 plus 273, okay? The temperature in Celsius plus 273, sorry for the glare, that's 423 Kelvin, 423 Kelvin, and then 50 degrees plus 273 is 323 Kelvin. That's a two, sorry, that's a little hard to read. So these are our temperatures we're gonna use. Now we're gonna plug them into the Charles Law equation, which is V1 over 423 Kelvin equals 7, milliliters over 323 Kelvin. Again, we're going to cross multiply, so these two numbers are going to get multiplied. So, four twenty-three times seventy-five. That's a big number but we're then going to divide by the number on the bottom. Units of Kelvin will cancel, and we'll be left with our unit in volume, which in this case, because V2 was in milliliters, V1 is going to be also in milliliters. Um, and here we'll go to three significant figures. So uh, V1 equals 98.2 milliliters. Again, just pause and ask yourself, did, does that make any sense? 
our temperature decreased, so our starting volume should be bigger than our ending volume, which it is. Question two. It says, uh, a sample of gas is held at a temperature of 40 degrees C and occupies a volume of 2.3 liters. To what temperature does the gas sample need to be raised to occupy a volume of 6.5 liters? So we have two volumes and one temperature. And they're asking for an ending temperature. So V1 is 2.30 liters. T1 is 40 degrees Celsius. V2 is 6.5 liters, and T2 is unknown. It's tempting just to plug these in and do the math, but again, remember, you need to turn your Celsius into Kelvin. So plus 273, right, on here, we're going to go 40 plus 273, you get 313. Kelvin. Okay, that's the number that you're going to use in your calculations. So now when we plug this into Charles' law, 2.3 liters over 313 Kelvin equals 6.5 liters over some number. Now, because these are liters, they will cancel, and this is Kelvin, so that means our answer is automatically going to come out in Kelvin, which is nice. So again, we're going to cross multiply and multiply these two numbers. So it's 313 times 6.5. And then I take that and divide it by 3 point, sorry, 2.3 liters. The units of liters will cancel out. And we're going to be left with our answer, which if we round to three significant figures is going to be T2 equals 885 Kelvin. We could see that the volume increase uh, almost threefold, and so our temperature increases almost threefold. So that makes sense. All right, so, so far we have solved for the ending volume. We've solved for the starting volume. We just so solved for the ending temperature. The only variable we haven't solved for yet is the starting temperature. So we're gonna do one of those. So it says a sample of argon gas has a starting volume of 15.5 liters. So V1 is 15.5 liters. An ending temperature of so T2 is 515 Kelvin, an ending volume of 34.2 liters. What was the starting temperature of the argon sample? So T1 is what we don't know. Now one thing is, notice this is already in Kelvin. So we don't need to add 273 to it. It's already in Kelvin. We're ready to go. Okay, so we're going to plug this into the equation. 15.5 liters over some number of Kelvin equals 34.2 liters over 515 Kelvin. So we're going to multiply, okay, cross multiply here. So that's going to be 15.5 times 515, get a big number. That's then going to be divided by this number on top. Now, when we divide that, units of liters will get canceled. So divided by 34.2. And what we're left with, this number, is our answer, which will be in Kelvin. And we'll round that to three sig figs, so we'll go 233 Kelvin. So T1 equals 233. Kelvin. And again, you should ask yourself if it makes sense. You can see that the volume more than doubled 
and so our temperature should more than double. And right, if we doubled this, it'd be 466, and it's 515, so it did a little bit more than double. So this makes sense. Anyhow, I hope this makes sense. Again, this has been a little presentation on Charles' law, which shows the relationship between volume and temperature for a gas.